guys, welcome back to lesson 10, module 3, video 2. And we were just working on number 2. You have your dry erase sleeve with your paper in there from your book, or you could use it on the screen, whatever works for you. Um, but let's look at number 2. So what do you notice about these problems compared to the problems in number 1? no unit fractions. They're all fractions that have more than one in the numerator on the top. And we're multiplying fifths and sevenths again, so we're continuing to work on our known products, our answers to multiplication problems that we already know. Okay, so using the known product of one-fifth times one-seventh, which is one-thirty-fifth, to make a simpler problem, let's continue to do that. And if two-fifths were one-fifth, then we already know how to find this product. So what are we going to do with our two-fifths? We are going to change it to one-fifth times two. And what are we going to do with our six-sevenths? We're going to change it to one-seventh times six. Okay, and like I was saying before, how I like to think about it is like there's six of those sevenths. There's two of those fifths, all right? Okay, so if two fifths is two times as much as one fifth and six sevenths is six times as much as one seventh, let's multiply those and use our known products, okay? Um, we can put parentheses around it if that helps you to visualize it a little bit but we're also going to change it up so that we're multiplying our fractions together and then multiplying our whole numbers together, right? So one fifth times one seventh is one thirty fifth and six times two is 12. So we have one thirty fifth times 12, which is gonna be 12 thirty fifths. All right, you see how that's working? just like how we did it in number one. We're just working with some larger numbers here and having to move our whole numbers over every time. Okay, so do you think we're gonna get the same answer if we use the area model? Well, let's try it out and make sure that we are using our area models to check our work. So um, one fifth, two fifths, right? And our rows are our fifths. We know that because we see one, two, three, four, five of those. So we can make our little sign and say two fifths. And then let's get a different color and do six sevenths. One, two, three, four, five, six sevenths. So here's our six sevenths. And remember that Six sevenths would actually be this whole piece, and two fifths would actually be this whole piece, but we're looking at what is overlapped there. So we're going to have those two, those two, those two, those two, those two, and those two. And we know that this whole thing is 30 fifths, so we can see there that that's 12 30 fifths. You can count them if you want, but yes, of course, it works out nice. All right. Um, I didn't say this in the last video, but you should make sure that you're writing this down in your books because this is your notes and I am going to erase it. You can always pause me and get it written down, but we're going to move on to 2B, 3 fifths times 8 sevenths. So once again, we're going to change it to 1 fifth. If you want to put the fractions together because you know that 1 fifth times 1 seventh is 1 35th, you can just put write those together. And then we're going to be multiplying by 3 and 8, which is 24. I like to write it out so that I know that I got all of the pieces there, you know, to just double check, not try and go too fast because that's where the mistakes can happen, right? So this is 135th times 24, which is going to be 24. 35ths. And 
Once again, if I do 3 fifths, this is my 3 fifths. And 8 sevenths, 8 sevenths. So now I know I have to come over here, right? And this whole block is going to be my overlap, right? Obviously not the space in between, but that would be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 30 fifths. And, you know, it's not that these are blank. These are actually the whole fifth, but we're only taking the overlap part. So I hope you can see that. If it's hard for you to see that, you could color it in and then just circle the part that we're using. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and do 2C. So make sure you have this written down, 24 30 fifths, and on to 2C. 4 fifths times 9 sevenths. So 4 fifths, that's 1 fifth times one seventh back to our known product, right? We know that's going to be one thirty fifth. So that's what they mean. Just practicing using the same product over and over and then times four and then times nine, four times nine is 36. So that's going to be 36, 30 fifths, right? 36, 30 fifths. So we have four fifths, one, two, three, four. Let's get a different color. And we have nine sevenths, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Where's our overlap? Right here. Okay. And there you can see that we have 36 out of the 35 and um, we can count four right we have four we can count by fours or we could do one two three four five six seven eight nine of course nine because we have nine sevenths nine times four is 36 it's always good to double check your work and look how fast you can do it using the area model as well as the multiplication. So I really like that. So that makes 36 30 fifths. And this is our first answer that's more than 35. So we're going to have to do some thinking about that because that means that it's more than one, right? And just to fill in our past answers, we had 24 30 fifths and 12 30 fifths. Now let's just talk about those a little bit. I can talk a lot faster than I can write, can't I? Okay, there we go. All right, so in part A, we multiplied two fractions that were both less than one. And in part B, we multiplied a fraction with less than one and one that was greater than one. And in part C, we multiplied a fraction that was less than one and one that was greater than one, right? Anything bigger than seven is going to be greater than one. Okay. So what do you notice about the values of the fractions in the answers? Like we said, for the first time in this lesson, we multiplied two fractions and found a product greater than one. Hmm. Why does that happen sometimes, but not other times, right? That's what we're going to be thinking about in this lesson. And I'm going to see you in video three. We're going to be working on number three, and we're going to be figuring out why is it sometimes going to be greater than one when we multiply by greater than one, but sometimes not greater than one when we multiply by something greater than one. Okay, thanks for your hard work. I'll see you there. Aloha.